It is Friday, December 31st of the NBA, and I'm back with my three best picks of the day, plus another four or five leans at the end of the video. Now, it is the final day of 2021, and to some of the foreign viewers out there, welcome to 2022. We're still a little under the weather, but the show must go on. Let's end the year with a bang, just like we did yesterday, because... Yeah, you see it. We brought out the brooms, a clean sweep of the slate, 3-0. and We look at it, our best bet of the day, Joel Embiid over 26 and a half points, cashed early in the third quarter. He didn't have to sweat that one out after he scored 16 points in the first. Now, a lot of people at the beginning of the month were saying, Austin, the best bet segment is cursed. And while I didn't disagree with them, but we were down like five or six units, you look at it now, it's on a 15 and four run. And I'm just saying the best bet segment might be back. I probably just jinxed it today. Now you look at the other picks, Cavs, Wizards goes under. We also have Wendell Carter Jr. who hit his first three at the end of the game, but still goes under one and a half, three pointers. So if you are new to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button. I promise I'm not normally, I'm in health and safety protocols just like the rest of the NBA, but we're still gonna keep getting after it. Now we are less than 300 subscribers away from 18,000. Well, I don't necessarily think we can hit that tonight, but if every single person that watches this video is subscribed to the channel, we will hit that 18,000. I'd really appreciate it if you just go down there, click that red button, subscribe. We appreciate it. It only takes a couple seconds. Also, click that like button. 2021 has been a crazy year for the Call on a Shot community. And just the, this time last year, December 31st, we had exactly 24 subscribers. So the fact that we're at over 17,000, almost closing in on 18,000, we really can't do it without you guys. You guys are the absolute best. So I appreciate you guys for letting us do this full time. And we're going to take COS to the moon. 2022, we got some big plans in store. Now, my last note, college football playoff. Best bets for Alabama versus Cincinnati, Georgia versus Michigan. Logan's video is live on the channel. I'll link it down below. Put it in the comments as well. And then I talked about that Caesar Sportsbook NBA jersey free bonus. I'll put another link down below in the comments if you want to go check it out. And let's get to the best bet of the day. Damian Lillard, Dame Time, under eight and a half assists, minus 140 on Caesars and DraftKings. Now, before you ask, because I already see the comments and I'll probably still get them, yes, seven and a half is acceptable, but it's up to you guys because sometimes a seven and a half to eight and a half line can be different. Now, this is why I always say it's important to have multiple different sportsbooks accounts because a line on Caesars and DraftKings could be eight and a half for a little bit of juice but then it might be on other books for seven and a half. And sometimes those big one, one unit differences really can make a big difference in terms of cashing or not cashing. Now, if we look at it, let's be honest, it's Dame time and it's New Year's Eve. We ain't passing the ball and he has not been passing the rock recently. Now, Dame has failed to hit this over in nine of his last 10 games. The one game he went over was against the Phoenix Suns in an overtime game. Now we think about the Lakers. What does this team do? Give up a ton of points in the paint, so I imagine Lillard will be driving and laying it in time and time again. I don't mind his points over 30 and a half. Sadly, you look at the way Lillard gets a bunch of his assists, it's because of Yusuf Nurkic, and sadly, Nurkic is out today, and so is a bunch of the other centers for this uh, team. We'll talk about this in a second, but Lillard, he's really struggled getting assists the last two games, which is four and five assists in his last two, and that's because Nurkic has been out both of those two games. Again, the Lakers, they look at matchup, they play pretty frequently being in the same conference. Little had gone under in four straight games versus the versus LA Lakers team. Not surprising. He didn't even get over seven. So at seven and a half, he hasn't hit that in four straight versus the Lakers. All in all, I think we should see a very similar performance to what we saw at a John Morant against this Lakers team when he had 41 points, just two assists. So I'm all in. I'll take his under eight and a half assists. Taking it with the juice, I'm fine with it. Best bet of the day. Up to you if you want to take it at seven and a half. And we're staying in the same game because we're ringing in the new year with Dame Time and the King. LeBron James over 46 and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. Minus 125 on DraftKings. Now, sometimes when someone's hot, you just kind of got to keep riding with them. That was cringe, but we're going to keep going. Now, I understand it's it, this line keeps going up and up and up, but... Still think this is too low for LeBron after what he's been doing. Now, first and foremost, happy belated birthday, as yesterday was his birthday, turning 37 years old. And what's his uh, birthday present? A great matchup against the Portland Trailblazers, who have been bleeding points to opposing teams left and right. Now, one of the best parts of this matchup is I think we're going to do a little bit of predicting here. And I think LeBron James is going to start at the five again today at the center position now. When I look at this Portland team, obviously they're without Nurkic or without Zeller. And in the past couple games, I've been starting Larry Nance Jr. at the five. And so I look at this matchup, I don't see, think they really want to start Dwight Howard against Larry Nance. I just don't think there's a need. So I think we might get LeBron at the five. Either way, I don't think it makes a big difference, but I think it will help him in terms of getting rebounds and assists. If we look at it, he started at the five only once in his career against 
and the five is at the center position, if I didn't make that note. He started out at the center position once against the Rockets a couple games ago, 32 points, 10 rebounds, 11 assists for 53 PRAs. We'll look at LeBron, he's cashed this in four straight games with 57, 53, 55, and 51 PRAs, and nine games this season without Anthony Davis. He's gone over in seven of them, and I'd say he's making that eight of 10. Now LeBron, he does a ton of, honestly, he's been shooting lights out. He's been knocking down a ton of threes. Last, last game, I believe he tied his career high with eight three-pointers, but when you look at this Portland team, I don't think he necessarily needs to shoot a ton of threes because this Portland team, bleeding points in the paint. But let's talk about the three-point line. Blazers giving up the seventh most threes in the league. But what are they also giving up the seventh most? Points in the paint at over 48 per game. The team with the worst points in the paint or gives up the most is the Kings at 52. So very close to that. But let, listen to this stat. Because over the last three games, the Portland Trailblazers have been without Yusuf Nurkic. And they've been giving up over 63 points per game in the paint. That is a ridiculous number. I think they'll be giving up free layups to Russell Westbrook and LeBron James tonight. I'm all in with the King as we ring in the new year. As this game is at 10.30 p.m. tip off. It's a home game for sta at Staples Center. LeBron's going to want to put on a show. We're all in with the King. Now, my last play of the day is an earlier one. Karis LeVert, over 29 and a half points plus assists. And stick around because we got a we got a couple of leans that we're going to talk about that we might add as once we get a line for these games. Now, Karis LeVert, over 29 and a half points plus assists, minus 120 on points bet. Now, yes, this is a points plus assists line. And, you know, normally we uh, we do PRA lines, but I don't necessarily think he's the best rebounder. So that's why I do points plus assists. This is the bet that cashed for us two days ago. We're all back in. 30 and a half is a fine line for this one as well. And this is one of another pay it pays to have you know multiple different sports books accounts because points bet has us at 29 and a half and i'm all in now today we look at the pacers team we'll be taking on the bulls and this is an early game like i said 3 p.m eastern time so hopefully if you're watching the video after this uh hopefully lovert's treating us nicely if he isn't eh, so be it skip to the end for some some extra leans that we're going to talk about now the pacers like almost every other team in the nba are struggling with the health and safety protocols list and that includes losing several players now one of those guys is going to be Malcolm Brogdon, who's been without them a couple games, but they also just added Chris, Chris Duarte, the rookie, to their uh, health and safety protocols list. We look at Duarte, and that doesn't necessarily take a ton of shots, but still averages, you know, sometimes seven, sometimes 14 shots a game. Another offensive weapon that's boop, but he's gone. So we look at these two teams. They just played a couple games ago, and Levert, 27 points, nine assists for 36 points plus assists. Now in the four last four games without Brogdon, You've looked at Levert, he's at 36, 35, 36, and 33 points plus assists. Now the biggest thing is he's shooting in a ton, 18 plus shot attempts in all four of those games, and 22 plus in two of the past three, and he's not even shooting the ball too well. Nine for 22 and eight for 23. Terrible, like 40% or lower from the field. So all it takes is him to knock down, knock down a high percentage of his shots, and we're all in. So I love Karis Levert today. And my only real concern here is hopefully, hopefully this is not a blowout. Hopefully the Pacers can keep this game close. They are at home, so I think they have enough talent to do so. But it might not be easy, but I think they can hang around in this one against the Bulls. So I'll take Karis Levert over 29 and a half points plus assists. Now let's get into some leans and let's talk about them. We're going with Jalen Green over 13 and a half points. I'm not necessarily sure if I'll make this an official play, but the number two overall pick, he wants that rookie of the year trophy. And with Cade Cunningham out, Evan Mobley has been looking pretty good among other guys but he has scored 20 plus points in two straight games might seem like a tougher matchup on paper against the Miami Heat team but let's be honest you probably can't name half the people that the Heat will be starting today they got a lot of they got Mar they just signed Mario Chalmers for kidding for crying out loud this is a, a team that is limited in the Heat so they won't have a lot of bodies out there which we'll talk about in a second but we look at the Rockets they're also limited too without Jay Sean Tate and Garrison Matthews so we're very limited shot treats Christian Wood KJ Porter or Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green I think Jalen Green will get up the shot attempts just have to knock him down now like Otherwise, same game, Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, and Omar Yurtsevin. I definitely didn't pronounce that right, but all three of these guys are going to play big minutes again for this Heat team, who, like I said, is without a lot of guys. Omer is their only center, and he's been rebounding the ball pretty well. I'm curious what lines we get from him. There's a reason I don't have any lines on the screen, because... I truthfully don't know what lines we're going to get for any of these guys, but they all should play big time minutes. Now, speaking of Jalen Green, let's move to another Jalen. Jalen Smith. Now, you might be like... Who the heck's Jalen Smith? I don't blame you. But basically, he's the Suns' last starting center, starting big man on the roster, and he wears some specs. So who could not respect the specs? I love Jalen Jalen Smith. And the last note, this is a super early game. It's at 1 p.m. Eastern time, but you look at the Suns, they're without DeAndre Ayton, JaVale McGee, and I'm curious if Jalen Smith slots into that starting position against the Celtics team that's pretty big with Robert Williams and Al Horford. You look at the last two games for Jalen Smith, he's played bigger minutes. He's at 11, he had a... 11 points, 14 rebounds, and 15 points and 9 rebounds. 
I think I'd lean is over probably in rebounds, but I'm curious if he gets a line prior to this game tipping off to 1 p.m. Eastern tip off. So it's an early one. So we'll see if we get a line. Now the last one, Spida and Ant-Man. Now you might be confused. You're like, did I switch to a Marvel channel? No, I promise that's not the case. But the Jazz, as Donovan Mitchell is Spida, They'll be without Mike Conley today and maybe Joe Engel. So if I'm going to take a Spida, a.k.a. Donovan Mitchell line, it's probably his assist, but I think he could be shooting a bunch in a pretty good matchup against the Timberwolves, who have Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards, who should be returning from, from health and safety protocols today. And this game, they'll be without Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell. So I think we could see a very similar game to what we've seen out of Jalen Brown a couple of nights ago, where Jalen Brown just absolutely just said, you know what, I'm not passing the ball 13 for 36, zero assists on the game. So not necessarily sure I'll take Anthony Edwards over because I don't like to bet a lot of players that are coming immediately off of the health and safety protocols list. But there are a couple guys that I'll be looking at. So if I do add any plays, I'll be linked down below, pinned, pinned in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you for an amazing 2021. Go check out Logan's video. It's linked on the screen. Stay safe tonight. Don't do anything irresponsible, but I will see you guys again tomorrow. Hopefully we're, if we can bring out the brooms again, hey, that would be a pretty great end to 2021. This has been a great year. Appreciate you guys all for tuning into the videos. I'll see you guys again in the new year, hopefully with the brooms out. Let's get it going. Peace.